Hello. Today we're going to be looking at how to fit a binary logistic model to data in R Studio. The data come from Mike Harris and they concern the bill length of male and female puffins. So to begin with I'm going to import the data. Here I am. I call up the text file and then I find it on my USB key which is puffinbill.csv. Here I've opened it and I'm inspecting it to see if it's all in shape. Uh, yes it is. I'll import and uh, here we have the data as it's been imported. Males and females, uh, the uh, bird ID, we've got the sex whether they're males and female and also the uh, length of their uh, bill curl length, it's the curvature uh, length. Now let's have a look at these data. To begin with what I'm going to do is a little bit of manipulation. I'm going to extract the data from that data frame and uh, call them by certain names. So to begin with the sex is the puffin bill dollar sex. So sex is a new variable given to uh, that column in the puffin bill uh, data frame. Likewise the length of the bill is puffin bill dollar curl length, that's a curl length. Now because logistic regression often involves uh, fitting models in which we have ones and zeros, I'm going to translate the male and female characters into ones and zeros. So I'm going to use a sex recoding. And the sex recoding that I'm going to have, of course it's arbitrary, is this. Sex code uh, gets if else sex is equal to female then we'll use a one but if sex is not equal to female then we'll use a zero. In this way for the uh, all the females that are listed we've got a one and for the males that are listed uh, we have a zero and we're using the if else statement uh, here to uh, produce this sex code. Now the next step is to draw the graph and here, here is the graph as it's been drawn. You'll notice uh, that I've used a jitter uh, here and that is to help separate individuals of the same sex that might have very similar uh, bill lengths and uh, this way we can actually see the data a little bit more uh, explicitly. I've also uh, filled the dots in using the uh, PCH of 19, that's the, uh, uh, the number that produces these uh, fill dots and of course we have labels for uh, X and Y axis. Now having visualized the data it really does appear that males uh, tend to be that much larger than females in that here we have the data uh, here for males and here we have the data here for females. Can we test the null hypothesis that males and females have equal heights and in so doing so work out a threshold in which uh, the puffin we're dealing with might be more likely to be male or more likely to be a female if it's a relatively small bill length. Well here's the model that we fit. We fit a generalized linear model which is the logistic regression model and uh, here it is. I'm using the GLM function here for generalized linear model. The sex code is the response, it's a binary response, it's a 0 or 1 and the uh, predictor here is just a continuous single predictor, it's the uh, curl length, it's the size of the bill. Now uh, we have to note that we're dealing with a binomial response variable, it's uh, not continuous, it's only in two different forms, in this case 0 or 1, and uh, here uh, by stating it's binomial uh, we then inform the generalized linear model that in fact the, uh, logit, pro the logit transformation is the appropriate one to make. Now let's have a look at the model summary uh, and you'll see there's an awful lot of data uh, being uh, generated. Here are the estimates of that sigmoidal line of best fit in terms of the uh, intercept 
and here is the gradient associated with that uh, sigmoidal line of best fit of the probabilistic model that generated uh, these data. The key thing here is that we reject the null hypothesis that the bill length has no impact on the sex, i.e. the ones or zeros, uh, because here the probability of us obtaining that test statistic or a more extreme if the null hypothesis is true is really very small. So we reject the null hypothesis. And this supports our intuition that statistically uh, looking at the data it really does seem uh, that males tend to be larger than females. Here we can also reject the null hypothesis that the intercept is zero but that really is of little interest compared to uh, this particular uh, rejection of the null hypothesis here. This is what we're mainly interested in biologically. Now how can we show the um, model, the probabilistic model that has been fitted to those data to help explain the distributions of ones or zeros or ma females and males in this case. What I'm going to do is first of all call up uh, xv and xv is uh, an x value and I'm going to vary it from the smallest size that we've observed to the biggest size that we've observed in very small steps. So xv is a vector uh, going in very small steps from uh, the smallest bill length to the largest. Now what would yv uh, be? What's the predicted value of y or the probability given that value of x based on the model that we fitted? Well we can look at this by saying yv is predict based on the model, and you'll notice that the GLM that we fitted, uh, the generalized linear model that we fitted was called model. And uh, here are the data that are going in. There are the, all the values of xv, and we want the curl length as the predictor for each of those values of xv. And because we want the unadulterated yv value, the probability, uh, here rather than anything more sophisticated like the, the uh, um, uh, odds ratio we're simply putting uh, type uh, equals the response itself. And then what we can do is simply draw the lines xv, yv and I'm going to uh, colour it in red. And here what we can see is the sigmoidal uh, curve that has been fitted to our data. These are, of course can only arise as binary outcomes but here is the probabilistic model uh, that is most likely uh, have generated or something very similar. These are of course estimates of the true model uh, um, that have generated these observations of females and uh, males uh, here. Now um, there are other ways, uh, neat ways of uh, uh, graphing these relationships out and one particularly nice package is in uh, the pop bio uh, package. I've actually installed it already so I'm simply calling up the library pop bio to remind ourselves and to uh, invoke all the functions that are within pop bio uh, so that we can use it and uh, here it is it's loggy hist a plot uh, and here we're putting the uh, the bill length as the predictor, here's the response sex code, here are a whole variety of different default uh, values uh, here but it helps in showing the frequency distribution of observations here of the males and uh, here of the uh, females. So that's it. It's binary logistic uh, regression and what we're doing here in fitting these uh, models are effectively fitting a generalized linear model, a model that can be rendered into a more tractable general linear model format by the appropriate uh, choice of a, uh, a transformation, in this case a log it transformation. Really simple in the end, what we have is a binary response and we call up GLM and note that we're dealing with a a binary distributed variable.